scanning the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now it's over to Headliners. Happy Easter! I'm Andrew Doyle. I'm here to take you through Monday's <laughs> news stories and I'm joined tonight by two wonderful comedians, Paul Cox, the People's Gammon, and Jonathan Cogan, the People's Smoked Salmon Bagel. <laughs> you both well. Yeah, good, Well, thank you're looking you. quite oh, dapper, really. aren't you? I know, I don't know how that managed you to happen. You made an effort. I did. It's Easter Sunday and... Uh, this That's very for, important to me. Andrew. This is for the, the Easter Bunny. <laughs> it is for the Easter Bunny, and I hope the Easter Bunny is well after disappearing on Friday, oh. or however the story goes. Oh, that was horrible. And I'm wearing a jumper. You are. I mean, you haven't made an effort. No, my girlfriend's been away for a month, so I'm down to my reserve clothes. Away for a you? month? Yes, yeah. Doing Isn't a show. that like? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you're not saying that your girlfriend does your washing for you? No, I don't let her do that anymore. Okay. Not, 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 not in the last month. Not after the personal fiasco of 2019, but carry on. <laughs> OK, well, we're going to start by looking at the front pages. As usual, the Times on Monday is leading with long waits in A&E, kill 250 people every week, and The Guardian is running with plan to scrap non-DOM tax status is full of loopholes for super rich. The Telegraph is running with council tax to double for 80% of second homes. The Mirror leads with King's show of strength. The Daily Mail has 250 needless deaths each week due to agonising waits in A&E. And the Daily Star has some baffling account about Elvis <laughs> appearing in Las Vegas or something like that. Those were your front pages. So we're going to kick off with the Times on Monday, Paul. What have they got? Well, some harrowing, but I guess not too surprising news. Long waits in A&E kill 250 people every week. And this is... Pace, this is there were a million patients um, that waited over 12 hours or more once yes. they've been admitted for a bed. And is this uh, an issue with triage? Is this, uh, look, yeah, uh, you know, so they get... So, uh, so, sorry, Andrew. Go on, no, go on. So the point is, I think it is an issue with triage, but the triage gets them to this point, and then they still... They're, they're, they're told at the end of triage they need to be admitted. Right. And it's that wait between the end of triage and getting a bed of 12 hours or more that people are dying in. So, so what is this? Is this just uh, the usual story? The NHS doesn't have the resources, they're understaffed? I think it's more of a kind of a filibuster war of attrition. They just try and grind you down, see how long you'll stay, and eventually you'll leave and you'll just deal with it yourself. You'll sew up your own wound. It's... Well, you know what? There are actually a lot of people... That, I mean, my mother used to work at an A&E in the reception and she said there were a lot of people there who just really didn't need treatment. They were just going there because they wanted somewhere to go. Wow. That's why I'm here. Know. Someone to talk to. Yeah, that's I mean, the only reason you're we, here. We probably should care slightly more about the 250 dead people, but... <sighs> Yes. Well, those are the people who did need treatment. Yes. That's my point. Evidently. So is it not the case that we should be encouraging people to maybe, you know, not go in unnecessarily, keep the queues down? I would totally agree with that. But since the pandemic, it feels like nobody goes to A&E unless it's 100% right, um, really? necessary. It feels that way to me. OK. Um, well, at the same time, every time I dial 111, um, if, you, if I have some kind of something and you want to speak to 111, they always say, oh, just go in. We, we can't tell you over the phone. So even if it's something you just want some advice on, they will just tell you to go in. So you waste... The A&E right? doctor's time... Really? Time? Isn't it about time we just funded the NHS better? Yes. I mean, people would argue... There will be some people who watch this, I'm sure, would argue that we give it enough money and they, sure. and they need to spend it better. Um, and there, are, there, is a, there is a strong argument for that. You could get rid of all the diversity and inclusion managers for a start. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a lot of waste. But without all that cynicism, I think you're right. I think as population grows, yeah. so does the need and the burden. And as a result, we need to invest in it, and we need to invest in it properly. I'm a fan of the NHS... Jonathan, Big time. I think it's mm. a fantastic institution. Well, I know, I also agree. I think it definitely has its uh, heart in the right place, or it certainly once did. But I think if you go to the NHS and you didn't need to go, you should have to pay for it, or you have to do like a forfeit or something. Well, so we get, you get to the end of triage and they go, you didn't need to come here. Yeah. That's £400. Please. Exactly. Oh, well, that seems the a bit unfair. <laughs> what about The Guardian, Jonathan, my favourite paper? What are they running with? Oh, yeah, so here's a story that I didn't understand until I read it, and now I sort of do. So, plan to scrap non-DOM tax status is full of loopholes for super rich. So, this is a story about owning a non-domicile property, is That's it? That's correct, Jonathan. Excellent, I remember that. So, this is to do with people who... Uh, generally wealthy people who own second homes that they don't live in... Uh, and there's all these new tax proposals which are apparently full of holes, and it's just a massive... 
uh, beneficial scheme for Rishi, according to this. He stands to gain, uh, gain savings of £250 million. Yeah, but that's Aaron. very cynical. This isn't being implemented just to benefit him, surely. Isn't it? That's what I would do. Is it not always the case that the rich benefit from these things? I mean, they've got very, very high-flown accountants that can find loopholes of in anything. Of course. I mean, it, yeah, it isn't, it isn't these dastardly rich people, and they are some of them dastardly, but it is their accountants. There are people that manage their money. Of yeah. course there are going to be loopholes. They'll be lo they all know about the loopholes before the legislation is enacted in any way, shape or so form. I, I met a woman once who told me that her job, her whole job, was to find ways for rich people yeah. to save money legally but not morally. Tax and she admitted that. She said, this tax is... Tax evasion or avoidance? Yeah, tax evasion. She said, no, no it's not avo it's not illegal. No. It's just that there are all sorts of ways that you can save money. Like, what's his face in the Shawshank Redemption and that prison Jimmy guard? Carr. Yeah, when he sort of... No. Oh. The, guy, the guy in the Shawshank <laughs> Redemption, when he sort of says, I can save you all that money if yeah. you just give that money to your wife as a gift. Oh, yeah. And then he almost throws him off the building, but he doesn't, and he saves a lot of cash, and then and he ends up shooting the himself. And, yeah. OK, no, I get that. I mean, I guess you are completely incentivized financially, maybe not morally, to avoid tax if you can. So why would people not pay people to do that, right? That is just... I suppose. So, I mean, I... Isn't, isn't morality just a social construct, Andrew? Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Read your Bible. <laughs> OK, we're going to move on to the front cover now of The Telegraph. Paul. Council tax to double for 80% of second homes. So this is more than 150 councils across the UK, Andrew, uh, will impose inflated levy in move to affecting 130,000 properties. There's a bit of a yeah. theme tonight at the moment. This is all about people that have more money than us that are able to afford things like people that can look after their money for them yes. and second homes and stuff like this. Second homes? But, yeah, yeah, so this would be on their second homes and their council tax would go up on... So, so how many homes you got, Cokes? Oh, God. You're up to four now, aren't you? Yeah. I'm up to four, yeah, but one's for the help, and I don't really like to talk about that one. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Fine, yeah. I mean, I'm conflicted by this sort of stuff because I've always been quite aspirational, so I always think I'd like to be the person that they're talking about in these stories, <laughs> and therefore I don't want them to change too much because I want to get this there. Is the way, this I is, the way, this is the way that the capitalists win in America. They always promise this to everyone. You will be as rich as everyone else. And, of course, it never happens, and I'm just one of those... It does sometimes happen. It can do. Yeah, not us. Well, you don't know, Jonathan. Be a bit more optimistic. Exactly. I am. I'm striving. I'm living under the spirit of creation, and I'm going to become a multi, multi hundred thousand pound heir. It's going to be glorious. Hundred thousand yes. pounds. I'm going to have multiple hundred thousand. Some, some of the wealthiest people I know are drug dealers, actually. So I'm thinking that maybe that's a way forward. Well, we not, will speak uh, after the show. Uh, no, no, that's not going to go on here. <laughs> I'm going to put my foot down on that one. We're going to move on to this one. This is a. Uh, the Daily Star, what Pulitzer Prize-winning story has the Daily Star got for us <laughs> on this Monday? Is heavy stuff. So Elvis fans are all spooked up. King of shock and roll haunting Las Vegas. So this is a scientific study that has just come out showing yeah. that the ghost of Elvis haunts one of the hotels where he famously... Did he die in the toilet there? Was that, was that in Graceland? He didn't die there. He died in Graceland. He died in Graceland. So, so tell me this, because a lot of people, I understand, you know, they love Elvis and they want him to be alive. Oh, he's alive. You think he's definitely alive? He's also a ghost. He's yeah. also a ghost he's and both. alive. Yeah. He's always I mean, alive. Ghost. Well, he was always very multi-talented. I mean, what, what do you think about this, Paul? Well, it, they don't mention boffins. And as soon as they no. don't mention boffins, I, I worry that boffins weren't involved. The and as Daily they, Star always mentions boffins. Yeah, but they haven't done, you see. So I think until they can prove that boffins have been involved in this story, I'm, I'm, I'm dubious. Do you believe in ghosts? I believe that there could be ghosts. Yeah? I wouldn't like to deny anything. I believe in... The wonder of the world. I saw a ghost when I was three years old. Really? What happened? It was a nun. A ghost of a nun. It had a claw. It reached out towards That's me. terrifying. Where well, I went that? to a convent school. So, you know, <laughs> sure it it could have been real. It could have been a real <laughs> nun. Sister Martha. Who I just hadn't had a manicure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hamza. No, it was in the garden, I remember. But, but the thing is, of course, I didn't. I thought you I might did. have done. I mean, I, could, I can still Kids see it now. Can you? Yeah. So you were three and... No, you... four. Four years old. But My at first school? Year, first year, yeah. yeah. Terrifying. So you, were, you got sent away to school at four? I wasn't sent away. It was a convent school. I didn't stay in the convent. Oh, right, OK, OK. Anyway, this isn't about me. This is about <laughs> ghosts. I think it is about you, Andrew. Let's terrifying. interview Andrew on this. This is brilliant. No, this is horrible. Right. Let's move on. Uh, this is quite traumatic for me to revisit the convent school. Anyway, uh, that's it for part one. After the break, we're going to have Tories in turmoil and Chinese students. That's Paul's favourite genre. <laughs> See you in two. Yes. Dubes & Co. Weekdays from 6pm. 
you think this country needs new gas power stations, apparently this will all be about trying to get some form of energy security. Rishi Sunak has upset people today with this suggestion, people saying that actually this would do more damage to climate change uh, than it would do good. Where are you on it, Richard? Uh, I'll tell you exactly where we need a lot more gas power stations and nuclear power stations because quite often the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Last week, we imported 16% of all our electricity because we haven't got enough capacity in the UK and we're now totally over-reliant on renewables. Um, the part of the problem is the lack of storage capacity, which mm. the government has finally got round to addressing. I think this as backup is actually quite a sensible idea. But they are not doing anything, as far as I can tell. At the moment, it will be retrofitted to have storage capability, which seems to be utterly bonkers. I mean, anyone who's got solar panels, um, you know, you know very well you're storing up energy. So it's about storage as much as production. And they could have gone, you know, 20 years ago, we could have had nuclear power. You know, we, we could have done more. We haven't looked far enough ahead in the future, and we are in grave danger of making the same mistake. I mean, the other side of this is what is the difference going to be? Blackouts are, you know, they're irritating and... Irritating? It'd be disastrous well, to destroy would our now. economy. Well, they would be now, but, you know, um, some of us remember three-day weeks and things like that. And in fact, you know, I grew up thinking that everybody had, you know, at least a couple of days a week when they had to eat off a primer stove and things. This is, again, I don't want to harp on, but this is one of the problems in the politics in our country, isn't it? So many politicians, they just think in election cycles, Absolutely. they just think, what can I do and yeah. say to get my own backside re-elected uh, at the next general election? They're not always looking ahead. Uh, actually, politics aside, what is genuinely the best thing for this country? I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners, your first look at Monday's newspapers. I'm Andrew Doyle, and still with me are Paul Cox and Jonathan Cogan. Aren't they both lovely? Go, <laughs> go and follow them on Twitter, or in real life, down the street. They won't mind. <laughs> We're going to kick off with Monday's Times now, Paul, and it looks like, in the infamous words of Donald Trump, this election could be a massacre. It could be a massacre. And to be fair, if Donald Trump said that, it'd probably be a, a 48 news cycle about how he was going to try and <laughs> kill all Americans. But anyway, Tories will win 98 seats to Labour's 468, says Poll. And this is a 15,000-person MRP poll conducted by Servation, so that's given it some sort of uh, validity. But that's oh, quite a lot, actually, isn't it? It is a term, high... In terms of a, a sample. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, it's... It's well, it done in Bristol, though, so maybe it doesn't count. Brist yeah, there's still real people in Bristol, mate, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you perform? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but put Labour on 45% of the vote with a share of 19% 19-point lead over the Conservatives. Well, this, at is moment. A, this is a bloodbath to use another Trump Trumpism. It, it is. And, and can you imagine 500 Labour MPs in in Parliament by the end of the year? I mean, it's like a nightmare. Well, it could be only because some of them are so incredibly progressive that they'd probably make us all trans. God and way. we'd have to transition back as part of a, a new of policy. Course, of course, my view is that they're very regressive. They just call themselves progressive, you know. But, well, uh, of course, yeah. I mean, and, uh, it's, it depends on which way you look at it. But, of course, um, we had Rishi Sunak's Easter message today where he talked about hope and rebirth and renewal. And, of course, he hasn't got a chance of any of no, those things. Was he dressed as a rabbit? He wasn't dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> no, you see, that's the problem. That's why he's not winning. Yeah. You'd see, if he had me as a strategist, it yeah. would work. That would be work. Yeah, you could go, well, what's the reason behind this? The, the Tories, their policies have just been alienating. The they're voter. not Tory. They're not conservative. They're not conservative. No. no well, there's not. that. You know, there was the whole Partygate thing. There was the the, 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 the lockdown. 
I mean, there's been a sequence of things, and also because they, they the Liz Truss thing, you know, the fact that they keep changing their leader. They're even talking about getting Penny Morden in instead of Rishi before the next mm. election. Well, apparently, Rishi is antagonising everyone because he's very hangry because of his fasting. So I read in that article. Apparently, he's just being really snippy. Is that true? That's what says the but article. He, but was he to, to Hindus fast at this time? Of year? No, it's it's a. Uh, it's, uh, just trying to. Oh right. no, it's because of his. He has a regime, doesn't he? I do like the, the attempt of being progressive there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's. I mean, it is pretty bad. I mean, if if, if Tories end up with just under a hundred. There's no point. You might as well. Just, I mean, there's no point in the pie, is there? I also don't think this will happen. No, I really don't think this will happen. It's not like the whole of the country's been turned off from the Tory Party. They just want the Tory Party to change. And yes. I, there are there are definitely stalwarts out there that are not going to vote Labour in the same way. There yeah, are Labour. They're not going to vote Tory either. They, um, the, well, they might go to reform, and you end up with a split on the right. Do you know what? I want these smaller parties to make some progress. I want the SDP to be in Parliament. Well, because it's, we don't like this first past the post business. No, do we? we do not. I want proportional representation, and I want it now. It's not going to happen, is it? I'm a Democrat. I want people. I want you know. Of course. I want it be to work. great. It would be great to see the rise of the smaller parties. Yeah. Well, Paul, you were saying backstage that you should have to own a house before you can vote, which <laughs> is an interesting idea. <laughs> not a bad idea, actually. Not a bad idea. I didn't. Okay, we're going to move on to the Guardian next. This is a big story about university and race, but thankfully it's boat related. Nice. Um, <laughs> Oxford confirm illnesses before boat race, but stop short of blaming pollution. So the Oxford University Boat Club have confirmed three members of their men's team were suffering from a stomach bug, uh, and that's why they lost the race, apparently. That's what they said. And it definitely was an E. coli or a bad batch of cocaine, according to this article. Who knows? Now, essentially, this story is three men have got ill. They've got a tummy bug. That's all it is. That's all it is. There is an attempt in here, though, to blame the pollution within the Thames. No, no they, like, didn't, they didn't even attempt. They were, like, thinking about it. Yeah, They're but, like, like, the Thames has been clean. When was it? No, the... Wait a minute. Isn't it just this is a hangover, isn't it? Of course. It? It's got to be. I mean, come I on. I mean, it's a tough race, and they did lose it. Yeah. Yeah. We've all made excuses for losing us. I, I'm, you know, I mean, the idea that the Thames is dirty, therefore they all got—I mean, it's always going to be dirty. The yeah, Thames has never been clean. When I mean, they, when they were looking for the uh, acid face guy, they found at least three bodies in there, didn't they? Because uh, yeah. uh, you know, the, the night before they said, "Well, it's very unlikely we'll find any bodies in the Thames." That was the last current. Year's Oxford team. And then, and then they went into the Thames and just found one every couple of hundred meters. Do you a fan of the boat race? Do you watch it? I uh, have watched it. I'll watch it if it's on. It isn't like I think there should be I've more teams. Watched. I get bored with just the Oxford two of them. Oxford and Cambridge. Who did, where in, did you? Go? Bring in Hull or something. You must, yeah. Did you go to Oxford? Apparently, yeah, Hull. But I, yeah, but I wasn't. A, I didn't row. No, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> What's the guy? No, I'm not saying that. Just you must support Oxford then, surely. Uh, well, I didn't really. I remember the eights, and we, I didn't really. I didn't care. Everyone was going down to the river, and I didn't really care. Is that awful? You were in your ivory tower reading the Beano or whatever. I was reading. I the lived Beano. in Putney oh, yeah? at one point, so it was kind of you know tradition to walk down. Yeah, I suppose I just I think more teams, you know, broaden it out a bit. What's the guy who shouts the instructions called? The, the Cox. Cox. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Let's move on now to Monday's Mail. Kogan is so immature. Yes. Right, the Mail. Uh, apparently, swastikas are anti-Semitic now. Political correctness gone mad, isn't it? The, yes, it is political correctness gone mad. Uh, fury over absolutely gobsmacking footage showing Met police officer telling Jewish women uh, that swastikas need to be taken into context and might not be anti-Semitic. What sort of context do you need? I mean, unless you're saying you're talking about the old, the old uh, Indian symbol, because of course the Nazis stole no, the swastika. The mirror, though. This is reverse. It's I, the reverse. It's a re but it's the same. Sort I of actually, I mean, design. I don't undermine all police officers, but I don't believe this police officer would have been aware of where the swastika came from. No. Um, I don't think that would have entered his mind. I think we've got to a point now where we are so avoiding the elephant in the room yes. that we're telling everybody that everything needs context. So nobody knows what right and wrong is anymore. Even the people that are employed to make sure we understand what right and wrong are. Is it just... I mean, we're seeing the footage there on screen now. Is it just the, the police don't want to arrest certain people because they don't want to be accused of certain things? And that even includes, apparently, if someone's holding a swastika. I would yeah. say, Jonathan, uh, a swastika is always... Always has anti-Semitic I mean, I would agree, but in the context of an anti-Israel march where there's been plenty of anti-Semitic remarks yes. being made at these ven it's pretty events, clear, right? events... I think the message is quite clear. Um, now, is this an issue with that one policeman who was too afraid to say something, or is this more a policy issue with the whole police? Uh, I, I can't imagine. I think this is a rogue cop, isn't it? Yeah, also, well, it's very difficult, cos, I mean, I wouldn't... I don't know about you, Andrew, but I wouldn't want to police any of this stuff. Yeah. And, um... 
I think they've learned to appease. Their, their whole mission now seems to appease, 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 unless maybe it's um, appease uh, someone they think they okay. don't have to appease. So, so, what, so what's happening is they're no longer leading in any way. Shape. They should be leaders within society, please. Yes. You know, I, I, I do. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I agree totally with what I just said because you know I don't want to become authoritarian. But at the same time, they should be a role model and they should be able to go. The swastika is bad. Yeah, but you know, this, this, we talk about this two-tier policing situation. The way that people react to things, you know. We felt this situation, a swastika on a march where there have been anti-Semitic statements being made. Of course, yeah. This story the other day about the pub in Cornwall that is being disqualified from the Pub of the Year yeah. award, the Hole in the Wall pub, because it has an old swastika armband from the actual war, right. which was given to the pub as a gift from a soldier yeah. who was bringing back his spoils of victory. You know, it wasn't uh, endorsing the Nazis, it was celebrating the triumph over the Nazis. And they had this museum room mm. at the back, and it was in a glass cabinet. They were nominated for Pub of the Year, but everyone's freaked out and said, no, now you can't do it, now you can't have the prize. Oh. The context there... That was outside of London then. Well, Cornwall. Yeah. You can't go oh, much yeah. further. Really. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, uh, and and the, the context there is clear. It's yeah. not promoting the Nazis. On a march where lots of people are saying anti-Semitic things, context kind of... You Absolutely. don't really, you know... Uh, I mean, we didn't see the whole thing. I always want to try and give as much context as possible because, you know, as comedians and as people who talk about the newspapers, things we often see things taken out of context. So, there is, yeah. so I want to give him some benefit of the doubt. But I do believe this is systematic now yeah. and they're just too afraid because the opposite side of that argument are Muslims and they're very afraid... To, to, to in any way discourage a Muslim from anything. And you know what, we all, we all, we all know and love Muslims are going through Ramadan at the moment, but they don't need any more protecting than we do. Well, Everybody needs to have the same rules applied. treat everyone equally. This yeah. is the problem with Rotherham. Can't we all just get along? Uh, That's a beautiful... You should sing Ebony and Ivory now. <laughs> That's what you should do. <laughs> all right. No. Monday's no. Guardian now, Jonathan. Uh, what's the latest in Ebony? the Middle East? Uh, OK, so Israel lodges proposal with UN for dismantling of Palestinian relief agency. So um, Israel has given the UN proposal to dismantle UNRWA, which I learned stands for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. Yes. Um, basically, they want to separate um, the UN and these guys because they have uh, the IDF have claimed that there's a large percentage, maybe 11% of this agency, who are actually Hamas-affiliated. Yeah, well, these uh, allegations have been circulating for a while now. They yes. are unproven. Right. We should say they are unproven. Yeah, which is interesting, because th um, this is in The Guardian, so everything about it tells me that I want to repel it, you know. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, and they say things like, it's totally unproven. But to be fair to The Guardian, th Israel have had quite some time to revive the evidence. And, uh, you know, I, when, I, when, this, when this story first came out, January, December time, in terms of the UNRWA story, it looked it looked nailed on that there were they were there were at least Hamas supporters within UNRWA, yeah. and it's it's it seems strange to me that in that time they've never been able to produce any cast iron. And the I reason mean, it seems strange is because obviously the vast majority of the people in UNRWA are doing a very worthy job. You know, these yes. are these are aid agencies. These are people who are trying to help people. So we're not saying that everybody in there. So we're, we're withholding aid from people that could be giving aid. Now, if Josh was here now, I'm sure he'd have something to say to me. But I, I'd love to see... The, it'd be good to see... But, there, you know, there's been a few allegations like this, like, like with journalists being there when Hamas broke through the fence, almost colluding. I mean, this stuff, you know, there's always going to be mm. some dodgy figures in various institutions, irrespective of where you go. Jonathan, any thoughts about this? Well, the, what I found most striking was that they said uh, the IDF said 11%. That's not an insignificant no, number. Exactly. That's, no, that's, that's quite that's... substantial. So, like you say, I mean, if this can be proven, then, I mean, I mean well, Israel are looking to um, find another agency to provide aid uh, and stuff. So it's not just saying we don't want to provide there aid. There are other agencies. We don't want to work with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. OK, we're going to move you. on now to Monday's Guardian. And in the words of the Red Hot Chili Peppers... Psychic spies from China try to steal your education. Nice. What does that mean, Paul? That's from Californication. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, it's OK. It's OK. This, what a musical a, a show we're having. The Conservative Party's scorched-earth immigration policy risk UK universities becoming increasingly reliant on students from China, Andrew. And this is to avoid financial crisis. And what's... What seems to have happened over... You know, I don't want to go Lewis Schaefer on us an all-team world, but everything is globalised now. Yeah. Or there is an attempt to globalise everything, and that includes our health service, our education. And some people might think that is absolutely wonderful. Why mm. not? Embrace the world, let's manage it as one whole thing. Until you look into things like... Yeah, 
what that really does mean. And the fact you do lose, and I'll say this word, and this channel loves this word, uh, as do I, sovereignty. We lose sovereignty through globalisation. And the thing that sover sovereignty gives anybody, an individual, a nation, a group, is their ability to manage things on their own. And all the time you globalise stuff, you're unable to manage it locally, and therefore you are totally reliant, as the universities are now, on money from without. And this feeds right back for me and to Tony Blair, yes. and when he encouraged absolutely everybody to go to university, because that must be the aspiration. And of course, they, they make a lot more money out of the foreign students. They course, do. Yeah. So we've got ourselves in a pickle here, and I don't know how you get out of it. No, Jonathan. Well, I do wonder if, if these universities are so reliant on foreign students, does that suggest that maybe they aren't necessarily viable institutions themselves if they are relying on um, external students to come in and not just, you know... Uh, English students. It's not here. new. Yeah. I mean, when I was at university and college, they were building halls and residence for foreign students, mainly from Saudi and Portsmouth, yeah. where I was. And, and it was a good thing, because what it meant was money was flowing, and this was late 90s, early 2000s, yes. probably about the same time you were doing university. And the... the it was a good thing for the for the college at the time that I was at because it was it was pumping money in. But we've we, we've just never stopped that trajectory. No. Well, they are short on money, to be fair. That is it for part two. But coming up, we've got Scotland's new hate crime insanity, and tasers for law enforcement. Let's hope the two aren't related. See you after the break. Hello, welcome to our latest GB News weather. It's been fairly sunny across the northern half of the UK. We've seen increasing cloud in the south and we're going to see further rain push in over the next few hours. But looking at the bigger picture, low pressure dominates at the moment. It does mean further showers and rain is on the way. We've got some heavy rain this evening across southern parts of England and this pushing slowly northwards into the Midlands and Wales as we head into the early hours. Thicker cloud and rain also pushing in from the North Sea to affect northeast England. Generally a little drier across Scotland, Northern Ireland here, some clear spells. And for most, temperatures remaining above freezing. So it's a mixed start to Monday. We've got cloud and outbreaks of rain across this central swathe of the UK. Some brighter skies to the north of it and to the south, but it's to the south where we'll see some heavy showers developing as we move through into the afternoon. Some hail, some thunder in there. We could see some local disruption. Cold under the cloud and rain, particularly northern England, southern Scotland, 9 or 10 degrees in the best of any sunny spells, either side of this up to around 14 or 15 degrees. For Tuesday, a mixed picture. We'll have sunny spells and scattered showers across much of the country. However, low cloud, rain and drizzle will affect parts of Scotland. Then later on in the day, further wet and windy weather starts moving into the southwest. It remains unsettled through into Wednesday and Thursday with further rain at times, temperatures around average. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria Di Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel.
Happy Easter again. Welcome back to Headliners. Let's go up to Scotland for this one in Monday's Telegraph. Jonathan, you've got this. I do indeed. So this really does seem to be the topic of the day. Um, Scotland's new hate crime laws could damage public trust in the police, chiefs warn after critics, including J.K. Rowling, warned legislation could have a chilling effect on free speech. So this is the new hate crime law that comes in tomorrow on the 1st of April, or if you're watching yes. in the morning today. Uh, happy April Fool's Day, by the way. Um, yeah, so this is very interesting. So Rob Hay, the president of the Association of Scottish Police Superintendents, is concerned the new hate crime laws which come into force could undermine public trust in the police. So this and is obviously... That's the thing. When the senior officer is saying that, <laughs> yes. why aren't the SNP saying, actually, maybe we've made a bit of a mistake here? Everyone's sort of saying this. All sorts of QCs are saying this. Uh, yeah, you should you have a review this? process. I mean, this is top shenanigans yeah. from, from the Scots, from the SNP in particular. We, you sh the, the, the review process, shouldn't take place after after oh. the policy's gone live. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Well, they've been bagging on about this since 2020. Hamza Youssef, when he was Justice Secretary, was trying to put it through back then. Everyone said to him, this is unworkable. He's got a situation where every single complaint is going to be investigated. That is what the police have pledged. Every single complaint. They've set up uh, hate crime reporting centres, one on a mushroom farm, one in a sex shop. Oh, my God. And, they, and anyone can report anonymously. Well, they, so they, there's no accountability. Also, a mushroom farm could be a good name for a sex shop. Carry on. It could, but yep. that's very key. And the... The anonymity is the key thing because this we are talking about the police's reputation here. So they are going to be the judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah. Because we anyone could just dial in. Yeah. Like tomorrow, there's a, there's a big show in Scotland uh, unleashed. I could I could make a, a secret phone call tomorrow morning and say. Don't and, give people ideas. And 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 just say I'm awfully offended before the show's even happened. And, and they then, are obliged to investigate. So. I mean, this is insane. I mean, it's such a stupid idea. It's so authoritarian just in, in every aspect. It's right for abuse. But, but, the, but the issue really isn't so much that it's going to end up in the courts and all, all of that. The issue I have is that, is that the process is the punishment. What's going to happen is people are going to have their phones taken away, their laptops taken away, their lives uh, sort of uh, completely dismantled. The police, because there's a lot of activists in the Scottish police, and they're really going to pursue this. And you say that a man who identifies as a woman is actually a man, that's going to be sufficient. I mean, that's what's happened with J.K. Rowling. You know, all of these people are saying, report her on April the 1st because she said that India Willoughby is a man, which happens to be a fact. <laughs> so people are getting uh, reported to the police for a fact and will be investigated for those facts. This is a vanity project as well for Hansa Yusuf. It, it, it's the, well, because he can't do anything in this time. It's, it won't be the end of the SNP. I don't believe that for a minute because uh, the separatists up there are, aren't going to go away. Yeah. But the SNP have ruined their reputation. Well, it, it and and he's going to go. He's going to go at some point. And but this is the only thing he's ever going to deliver. He must have a, a real authoritarian streak. He must do. Absolutely. Because, you know, he's talking about uh, criminalising people for what they say in their own homes. He's talking about people with the criminalisation of comedians. Is there a retrospective act if you said something earlier on? Can you imagine? After, after like... Well, I don't know. I, that's a really good point, because... Well, I think what one lawyer was saying on Twitter when they posted to J.K. Rowling is, you better delete your tweets, because come April the 1st, and they're still up, then it won't be retrospective. It'll be... It'll be... It'll be live to some degree. But, I mean, let's be honest, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be unworkable. Bear in mind that oh. only the other month uh, the, S the Scottish police announced that they were introducing a new strategy where they basically don't investigate theft or vandalism if they don't think they can solve it <laughs> because they don't have the man manpower, the resources to do it, and yet they do apparently have the resources to investigate every mean tweet. So Unbelievable. I hope that they do arrest J.K. Rowling. And can I just say it's rolling? Rolling, yeah, just, like bowling. Just think of rawhide. This one. Rolling, rolling. Yeah, roll, OK, rolling. Sorry. Uh, Joanne. Is that her name? JK. Yeah, to you, but uh, to me. No, so this is serious. Um, but uh, no, what I would say is it, it, for her to be arrested could at least start the end of this craziness we're in at the moment. It, because I mean, to arrest yeah. JK Rowling would be the beginning of the end for this absolute ridiculousness. Maybe, maybe. I fear because we're doing our comedy show there tomorrow to mark the day. Oh, yeah. I fear that if we were arrested, Jonathan, it, it might not matter so much. I'm too pretty <laughs> to go back to prison. <laughs> I can't, I know, I'm with you, I'm not going back to that hellhole. No, 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 Absolutely I've done my not. time. I am out. No, I, I owe a few people some cigarettes for the protection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. snout, yes. Yeah. yeah, snout. Oh, he's a shanker. <laughs> anyway, let's move on now to Monday's Mail. And they've got a solution to chronic poor behaviour, apparently. <laughs> yeah, tasers. Tasers could be used in prisons for the first time under a new government pilot as violence in jails reaches record highs. So this is a 50,000-volt stun gun Ooh, uh, to be trialled uh, by riot squads Crikey. and potentially then deployed uh, uh, to specially trained prison officers. Now, on the face of it, 
you know, it's not an easy job. And from the outside, now we're all out of prison, of course. Yes. We probably look at this and think, well, maybe it's not such a bad idea. But I always have always had this kind of slight distrust of authority. And yes. the idea that you could give someone an authority, so you've got a real power divide there, and they can have, one of them could have a £50,000 stun gun, and the other one could just have said something the other one doesn't like. Well, also, isn't that... Can't that do permanent damage? 50,000 oh. volts? I mean, surely. And they're sub-lethal, apparently, but I'm sure they can do... What is I mean, sub-lethal? Sub yeah. just, just under that's, death. That's my Immortal Kombat yeah. uh, name. Um, I, I think they can... Well, especially if you 50, get... 50,000 volts, Jonathan? Yeah. I once got a Chinese burn. I was crying for weeks. Uh, we don't call it that anymore. <laughs> it's an East Asian burn. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. Come on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean... But I'm really surprised that these guards who deal with riots in prison don't actually have anything already like this. What do they just use? Batons? And... They're wit. They're wit, They're wit yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, angrily worded it's just letters. aphorisms <laughs> yeah. from Oscar Wilde's you, you, back you, you you use, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, look. Right. Yeah, just... Can't yeah. we all just get along? <laughs> That's your catchphrase for tonight, <laughs> Jonathan. We're moving on to The Telegraph next with a headline from 2010. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. so, oh, 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 this is an old article. Mirror, publish, Mirror publisher warns Facebook poses potent threat to civil society. Uh, so research, uh, sorry, Reach, which is a company which also owns dozens of regional titles, took aim at Facebook's parent company, Meta, for its decision to deprioritize news on its platform. So Meta have decided that they're going to deprioritize news and actually get more user-created content. So we don't see news very much on Facebook, basically, now? No, not anymore, which no. I actually think isn't the worst thing in the world. I think no. people have got very mentally ill from having too much news thrown at them on social media. But I they think always change the algorithms, anyway. They, they're always changing it, of course. We're yeah. not all seeing the same thing, are we? I mean, I think the Red Tops, particularly the papers that are complaining, are slightly envious. It was their job for decades, if not a century yeah. or so, to do exactly what social media is doing now to yeah. the population, is spreading whatever information they wanted us to hear. They choose it. Don't they? Yeah, and now I, they now they now they're being. And they're I, using, thrown using, using I don't bother. Security. I don't bother posting on Facebook because I've, I'm clearly blacklisted. Because I, because you whenever I so? post, whenever I post anything, I get nothing at all. You know. And you've got about thirty. I, I tagged you in something today on Facebook. Yeah. On my on my there's, page. At there's Paul definitely Comedy. something going on. And, you know, and I once wrote a, a video that got 150 million views on. 150 Facebook. million. Yeah. What on was Facebook. That? It was one of the pie videos, but it was it was it was a, it was a Facebook thing. Yeah. But but because the algorithms back then really just kept sort yeah. of churning it out. I think they didn't realise how much of a Nazi you were then. But now they've realised that I'm evil because yeah. I believe in free speech. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. I, should yeah. Kept, I, should kept, I should have kept that to myself. Yeah. I should have locked my own free speech. You should always down. keep your own free speech to yourself. Yeah, I don't trust any of these platforms anyway. They're don't read the news. Or they? Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, what about this for a debatable use of taxpayers' money, Paul? Yeah, Cambridge to decolonise the dodo in taxpayer-backed projects. So this is the, a uni the university is seeking a PhD student to investigate its collection of plants and animals to root out imperial connections in its museum of zoology. So here we go again. It's just another round of how can we hate ourselves more. It's so boring. It, 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 it's entirely dull. I'm just. Get, do you know? I almost want to recommend therapy to these individuals yeah. and organisations because all they do is look back. If I you, mean, the if, dodo's been dead for a long time and yeah, I'm it, sure in the time of the dodo there were some colonial people with colonial attitudes so what get over it during the colonial times there were colonial attitudes I'd imagine. unbelievable isn't I it imagine. who knew <laughs> yeah exactly uh, I mean they're, they're deco decolonizing yeah, everything that's right. yeah. that's right. everything I mean, they decolonize well, because they've, they've decided <laughs> they've decided that oh. And, and it's, it's a trope, but they have decided that white, powerful people are yes. the worst kind of people on earth. So they've had to redesign power. So they've got literally poor white working class people having white privilege yes. in order to crowbar this colonial business into why perpetuation. They, why are they involving the dodo? I mean, the dodo is the victim in all of this. I mean, it was wiped out. Although they're talking about cloning the dodo. Yummy. I mean, if we brought the clone, the dodo back, decolonize de the dodo. Decolonize the dodo. What, what if it just turned out to be not very nice? Or I mean, they look, they look quite solemn. Delicious. They look quite cute. You can have like a KFC, but you can have like, the, the Dodo <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah, right. maybe. Like KFD. Actually, that'd be quite a good horror film, wouldn't it? Like D Dodo Park. <laughs> yeah, they, Dodo go, Park. they go mad. And yeah, but how big? Were they like sort of ostrich-like? No, they were plumper. They were fat with big, big beaks. Like me.
Yeah, they, they I, I was not going to say that, Paul. That was, would be very offensive. What did he say? He, <laughs> like said, he, said, like you. he said he was fat with a big beak. Uh, I think you look uh, wonderful. Thank Particularly you. dapper in your, thank you very much, mate. In your waistcoat. That's a well, we do need to decolonalise Paul. We do, that. yes. You, you will never get this I word. I can't do that word. Or Scottish accents. They're hard. Yeah, well, there we go. Let's move on to this <sighs> next story now. This is one of your favourite topics in The Guardian. Artificial intelligence. Yes, this is interesting, for me at least. So OpenAI deems its voice cloning tool too risky for general release. So a new tool from OpenAI that can generate a convincing clone of anyone's voice using just 15 seconds of audio has been deemed too risky for general release. First of all, this technology already exists. There's a couple of other apps and AI things Haven't you, can you use used it in, around the office. In, a, in a prank style Kogan special? Yeah, I clone crested his voice and got her to say loads of horrible stuff from my yeah. laptop around the office. <laughs> Uh, I mean, honestly, this is ridiculous. So, Co Kogan is into the AI, right? Oh, yeah. You know, he, he wrote a song on AI about the hate I monster heard it. in Scotland. Oh, no, new, not that. I heard the headline ones. No, the new Scottish oh, yeah. hate monster thing. I write a lot of songs. <laughs> and you did it in the style of a children's uh, yes, thing. Yes. And I, of... I posted it on Twitter today. But it's, it, is, it is very odd that... The, they can make song, whole songs and... Uh, oh, in anyone's voice. So I like to write erotic stories and get Jordan Peterson to read them out to my girlfriend as she falls asleep. You can clone anyone's voice. It's a beautiful thing. And is that something that she actually is interested in? Great question. I've never asked. No. Yeah. OK, well, why, would you, why would you? We've got to take a contractually mandated break now, unfortunately. But after the break, we're going to be discussing Easter gluttony, brain-eating parasites <laughs> and growing crops on the moon. <laughs> Farage, Monday to Thursday from 7 pm. Serving police officers, showing that up to 20% of them are thinking about quitting the force and doing so within the next year or two. What on earth is going wrong? Problem, of course, is that those that go will be the experienced ones to be replaced by inexperienced ones. Kevin Hurley, former Detective Chief Superintendent at the Met Police, joins me from his home in Surrey. Kevin, this figure is shocking. The terms and conditions have really dropped off under Theresa May's, uh, what I would describe as an attack on the police service, where their pay has really dropped off, spending power down about 22% on what it once was. Worse still, the golden handcuffs, which were once the excellent police pension, have been taken away and the pension is now much reduced. The other mm. thing that's killing them is the constant media and activist battering for police officers. Off the back of that one psychopath and the, uh, the other, if you like, Tinder rapist, everybody now thinks the police are kind of all like that. What that means for the individual patrol officers they're being given stick everywhere. For example, you know, their bosses left, right and centre are rolling over. Oh, yes, we're institutionally racist. What that means to a 25-year-old constable working in Ballam High Street is everyone screaming at him, you're a racist pig. They get surrounded on the streets when they try and do a stop and search on arrest. Add to that the fact that the criminal justice system is collapsing. They're tipping out the prisons with early releases. So, because of course there's no prison space, cases are taking years to get to court. They're getting derisory offences sentences because there's no room in the prisons. All of that's really demoralising for the police. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Let's jump straight into this one from Monday's Telegraph. Paul, you've got this. The grim future awaiting British boys 
Uh, which sounds like uh, a, a bad story. Uh, Britain, <laughs> Britain has a boy problem. I'm not sure you agree with that, Andrew, do you? If you are... Goodness <laughs> sake. Sorry, mate. It's casual, 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 casual homophobia there. Uh, if you are born male today, you are increasingly likely to struggle in school, in the workplace and at home. So this is all about the attainment gap. And, yeah. and, and it's not a news story because... Girls have always been ahead of boys in, in this so-called attainment gap for decades, for a yes. long time, always out. And at university, even. A absolutely. What's happened, I think, in my view, in recent times, is it's coincided and amalgamated with the feeling after Me Too that men in general need to be sorted out. Right. So we've got this kind of boy problem and we've also got this men are bad problem, and all boys have got as a role model now seem to be people like Andrew Tate, for instance. Yes. And um, the, the, the point in this story is they're leaning... You know, the only, thing, the only escape they've got is through right-wing politics in some way. Are they always crying oh, that in? There's another way out. And what's the, the other way out? Get the snip. What? What do you mean by that? If you don't like being a boy, you know what you can do. Oh, for goodness sake. It's ridiculous. <laughs> there, is, is, there, is there not a lack of role models... For, what for do you think young... I'm doing on here? I'm Are you the gal... role model? Who are you, you role modeling for? You. I am leading men to a better <laughs> Kogan tomorrow. the Pied Piper. But, but there is something to this, isn't it? Because, you know, boys have been underperforming... Well, boys don't like coursework. It's well, that's right, right. So in the it's 90s, boring. when this really kicked off, yeah. people say it's because they went less from an exam-focused yeah. curriculum to a coursework-focused curriculum, and boys are just lazier. So they won't do the revision. And you have to draw the borders around it. It's long, it's boring. Don't make right. me do it, sir. I'll do the exam. Well, but there is a pro I mean, if we... Because we're often talking about, you know, gender pay gaps and all this kind of thing, but why aren't we talking about the education gap, which very much does not... Uh, because nobody... The, the SNP, believe it or not, ran on this. They were going to close the attainment gap. Right. And uh, they haven't. <laughs> By making everyone worse. They haven't. So, they, so what they've done is actually got rid of gender yes. so that they don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're going to move on now to the mirror. Jonathan, this is a story about not eating Easter eggs all at once. Yes. <laughs> um, I thought you didn't read the joke there. Excellent. Um, <laughs> because it was insulting. To me? Yes. Well, I, I have it coming. Um, so, NHS doctor warns people not to eat Easter eggs all in one go, sparking fierce backlash online. So, Dr Andrew Kelso called for moderation due to things like tooth decay, obesity and type 2 diabetes, which can all be caught immediately after eating one whole Easter egg. And there's been a lot of backlash. People don't like being told what to do. Obviously, sugar's bad for you, but I'm going to eat my Easter egg how I goddamn want to. I don't understand this. This guy's saying that an Easter egg yeah. contains two-thirds of your daily calorie allowance, but they're hollow. They're just... There's hardly anything yeah, in Yeah, so that would suggest... Uh, it's around about 2,000, isn't it, calories? Yeah. And I know it's changed a bit. So that would suggest that in the order of 1,500 calories in an Easter egg... Yeah. <laughs> He's saying don't eat it all in one go. I mean, this is all nanny state stuff to me. I mean, we don't need people to tell us. But then, but then, you know, I'd rather have that person than the people that respond to it. There was someone who said, technically, it's better to, for your teeth to eat it all in one go. And, of course, we all know anyone who starts a sentence with technically is, <laughs> is a certified war. I mean, I don't know. It's better for children not to eat too much sugar, and I do think the children will thank us if we don't let them have a chocolate Easter egg, but give them a boiled egg instead. Even they will it's not the same, thank us. It's the same shape. It has the same pagan connotations. It does. It's all pagan. Right. Quite. So, well, well, why not do that? Uh, that's one idea. Well, apparently, Hamza Youssef has just introduced a law where you're not actually allowed to eat your Easter egg in one go because it's culturally appropriating fatties. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, apparently, according to this article. Yeah, well, that wouldn't <laughs> surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> at all. Let's move on now to the Daily Mail. Paul, this is a story about a brain-eating parasite in British water which might explain Labour's sudden popularity. It <laughs> could well do. By the way, if uh, if you're still worried about COVID... Uh, oh, forget look, about it. Look away. That's, that's so 2022. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Warning, warning that brain-eating parasite with 99% death rate might be making its way into yeah, this, British this water. Yeah, this is the stuff of horror films, this, isn't <laughs> Good night. See you and later. It, and so, right, but it's, where does this parasite hang out at the moment? It's, it's just... It's in tropical places, It is, right? and, but... but Oh, I think you're forgetting climate change, Andrew. <laughs> and climate right. climate change... Because what climate change does is it talks to parasites and says, yeah. come on, guys, it's warmer. Lures them over. Yeah, like, the Isle of Wight's quite warm this time but of year. But wait a minute, now. where are these parasites living, does it say? It says they are living in... No, that's the name of the parasite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right, very, really near that. <laughs> no, that would have been a faux pas. He's no scientist, but what Paul did say backstage is that the only brain-eating parasite here is feminism, which I thought was too much. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was I'm too I'm glad you're not saying that on air. No, yeah. I wouldn't say it anywhere. all your fan base 
face of women. Exactly. Yeah. You do get a lot of them, don't you? Women oh, crawling after yeah. you. Do you know what? I was in a hotel in Litchfield. Oh, yes. I was in a hotel <laughs> in Litchfield on, on yes. Friday morning, and four women came up to me. Um, really? They, they didn't all say hello, but one of them asked me if I was Paul Cox from GB News. Uh, you see, the ladies love a Russia from the People's Gamble. So, uh, hello, ladies. Hope the wedding went well, by the way. Yeah, I bet you disrupted that one. <laughs> I was just having my breakfast, you know. Oh, you were the stripper the night before. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's move on on that image uh, to the Telegraph. Uh, Jonathan, there may not be life on Mars, but we'll soon be growing wheat on the moon. Oh, nice. Uh, so, NASA to cultivate crops on the moon. So, NASA is planning to grow plants on the moon for the first time when it sends humans back to the lunar surface. Now, the... That's good. I'm That's glad great. we haven't been there for decades. I know. If at all. Oh, well oh, done. Yeah. No, of course we did. <laughs> no, of course we did. But, you know, it's... it's it's, we, we should go back to the moon. Why do we stop? Well, I mean, Elon's leading the, the foray into space. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, we, we can grow food for our astronauts, and so, we, you know, it, it saves fuel and shipping, and it's sustainable. It's good. This is it. It's fantastic. This... I think it's aspirational as well. You know, when yeah. Kennedy said, by the end of the decade, we're going to go to the moon, and we did. Why can't we go back to the moon? Well, can you imagine explaining to starving people, even in our own country, yes. <laughs> that it's OK, guys, we're growing cress on the moon? <laughs> What's wrong with that? They will appreciate the aspirational element. Hey, well, they will, that, that's what they're after, aspiration. And if, well, you, grow, you, hit... if you grow enough cress on the moon, the moon it'll actually look isn't... green, it'll look like it's made of cheese. Is, yeah, and isn't the moon just a hollow vessel for alien mm. life? Well, yes, I... with two-thirds of your calories for the day. <laughs> Don't eat the whole moon at once. Yeah. After uh, watching Free Speech Nation today, I'd love to see cress on the moon. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Joke. I do, I do, I, you know, I do believe in the idea of space exploration. I think we should get to Mars. You believe next. in ghosts, Andrew? I don't know what to think. I don't, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I do think that I'm right about this. That we should, yes. you know, just because there are other things that we need to spend our money on. That, that will, that will good always point. be the case. We, need, right? we, we wouldn't progress, would we? Point. No. We wouldn't progress as humanity if we didn't. And growing cress on the moon and growing crops on the moon—that sounds like an incredible thing. It's a good start. Yeah. It, it, OK, I'm, I'm all for it now. Next up, Duckweed, was it Duckweed? Duckweed and Chris. I mean, on, the, on the conspiratorial note, a lot of people I know now who've been going down these various rabbit holes are now saying, quite sincerely, they think Stanley Kubrick filmed the moon landings, that no-one ever went there at all, it's all a big conspiracy. You mean new circles, Andrew? Well, I mean, they really are going a bit crazy about this, because if it was a conspiracy, yeah. absolutely everyone, that 20,000-odd members of staff involved at NASA, all of them would be involved in it, and someone would have said something at some point. Unless they didn't know. How could they not have known? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Why did I come here? down on the wrong side of this argument? I don't know. It definitely happened. I, I think it happened, but... It did happen. It just did. <laughs> but I hope this has become a waving. debate now. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I hope it happened. Did. I hope so. I really hope it did. I yes. think it did. Why, I is, hope it, no why one... is it that these conspiracy theories, they have to, if they believe one conspiracy theory, they have to believe all of them? Yeah. All of them. Paul but... McCartney died in the 60s. I know. No, yeah, but that, that is true. Paul is dead. You heard it here first. He's OK, the, he's we're the definitely ending on that note. Uh, let's have another quick look at Monday's front pages before we leave. The Times is leading with long waits in A&E, which kill 250 people every week. The Guardian is leading with plan to scrap non-DOM tax status. It's full of loopholes for the super rich. Onto the Telegraph now, they're running with council tax to double for 80% of second homes. The Mirror's got King's show of strength. The Daily Mail also leads with the hospital story and the Daily Star has some bizarre story about Elvis returning as some kind of spook. Anyway, those were your front pages. That is all we've got time for. Thanks ever too much for my wonderful guests, Paul the People's Gammon and Jonathan the People's Piglet, I think. <laughs> Paul is back tomorrow with uh, Simon Evans and also with Nick Dixon. But if you're watching the repeat at 5 a.m., please do stick around because now it's time for breakfast. Happy Easter! That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello, welcome to our latest GB News weather. It's been fairly sunny across the northern half of the UK. We've seen increasing cloud in the south and we're going to see further rain push in over the next few hours. But looking at the bigger picture, low pressure dominates at the moment. It 